in anything that you try, anything that's new, you're going to have some people who don't want to get on board with it. And that goes the same with PBL. There are some cons that you hear over and over with anybody that is going to uh, try out PBL. And you hear this from the people that don't think it's such a good idea. And some of the main quotes that you usually hear from teachers that aren't ready to try PBL is, I already do projects in my class, therefore I'm already doing PBL. Another one is, teachers don't teach, they're just kind of there and it takes the teacher out of the classroom. And the last thing you hear a lot of times with people who are against it is, PBL will prevent me from covering all of my content. Well, the first one I'm going to address is, well, I already do projects, therefore I'm doing PBL. Whether it's project-based learning or problem-based learning, it looks different. And so that's why we get people who are doubters of that. And one of the differences between PBL, especially project-based learning and actual projects, is in a traditional projects, the project itself is just regurgitation of the content that was given by the teacher. All of the content is front-loaded. And then when you go to do the project, that's when you're just kind of telling what you already know. And the difference between that and real PBL is PBL allows the students to learn and retain the content as they complete the project. So they're being self-directed learners and they're uh, taking the initiative to learn, learn the information. Another thing you hear is that, well, in PBL, teachers don't actually teach. And I would say that's not true because what the teachers are doing is they're going from the sage on the stage or the one that knows everything and that's telling all of the content to really being the guide on the side or the peer learner. Their job is now to walk around the room and work with the students that don't understand the content as well. They can pull out students and do individualized lessons to help them understand, but they're not standing in front of everybody and going at the same pace. This also allows some of the students who are further advanced to move at their own speed and get ahead. The other thing you also hear with teachers who aren't wild about PBL is PBL will prevent me from covering all of my content. And that's when you get into the uh, argument of depth versus breadth. And I found this great quote. It was from a research study that said students who reported covering at least one major topic in depth for a month or longer in high school were found to earn higher grades in college science than did students who reported not covering in depth. Students reporting breadth in their high school courses, covering all major topics, did not appear to have any advantage in chemistry or physics, and a significant disadvantage in biology. So this just goes to show that even if you do less content, but you do it more in depth, the students are going to get more from that, and that's where PBL is going to come in, because projects and problem-based learning does take longer than just the normal traditional classroom. So you can see that this is going to have its advantages in the lower level courses, like those basic freshman courses that everyone needs to take. But it's also really important when you get into the upper level electives, especially um, courses like government and world history, where the students can do more uh, projects that are real world and that can be relevant to their lives.